<laughs> I'm Colin. I code. I have for a while. I'm tired of people calling this technology artificial intelligence, and I like long walks in the evening, soft pretzels, and chocolate cake. Uh, let's get going. So what we're calling narrow AI right now, uh, or transformers, uh, work by categorizing information, utilizing a systems of weights and biases, essentially performing a calculation of what the next value in a series should be. Uh, through a series of programmatic steps, you utilize a value set in your input type, provided by your prompt, for the procedural generation of the next value of the output type. For instance, for image generation, this is taking a process called diffusion, by which they essentially continuously layer on modifications using very complicated mathematics you absolutely don't need to know, called Gaussian distribution, to a base that looks sort of like really colorful stamp. For text generation, the process is actually more complicated but it uses this process to generate the next word in the series based on what you've got so far. Think of it on a very simple level as an enormous Plinko machine. You drop the ball in here at butts and it's guided by pegs of each of the previous elements of the output so far until it gives you a picture of a Kardashian with three legs. This process repeats over and over, modifying the setup with the new element that's been added, performing a procedural repeating process with the currently generated values to provide a series of output values. Uh, and this ultimately allows us to generate transformations through semi-random association selection from the prompt format into whatever the chosen output format is with a, a lot more generalized precision, and that's comparative to any previous machine learning process. So given these underlying mechanics, calling it intelligent because it outputs words, images, or categorizations is like saying my toaster understands the art of baking because it outputs toast. Except in this case, the toaster burns the shit out of my toast 40% of the time and costs me 50,000 a month on my power bill. So as a result, for the remainder of this work, I'm gonna be using the term APE, or Associative Procedural Engine. It's much more accurate in describing the underlying mechanics and it prevents a lot of the misrepresentation that causes people so much confusion and, if I'm honest, disappointment when using these tools. Now, I wanna get this out of the way first because this is an important subject to me particularly. I believe in the power of mentorship and the importance of self-motivated learning. And I would be the first on board if I found APEs to be the learning aid for those attempting to gain expertise in the wide number of things APEs can output. As a self-taught developer, this is something that not only has been core to how I've gotten where I am, but as a father and mentor, something important to put into practice for others. That said, there's one thing I've heard from people about APEs that I know from the ground up to be dead wrong. APEs accelerate your learning curve like a paper airplane is accelerated when you hit it with a rock. They have not, do not, and never will provide an upward trajectory over time. No matter how it feels, what they accelerate is your confidence curve. We're all familiar with the Dunning-Kruger effect by now. Think of APE-assisted learning as something of a Dunning-Kruger multiplier. It takes that one friend who insists he's a physicist because he looked up the wiki on Richard Feynman and gives them idiot superpowers. You do not want to be that idiot. You do not need to be that idiot. Utilizing APEs to augment your learning, in fact, makes you that idiot. Because people with little expertise can get something to work in a given language, APEs give them a personal proof that they can code in that language. Worse, this has made portfolios insanely unreliable as demonstrations of competence because there's a tragically high chance that the code you're looking at is just a copy-paste with extra steps. If you are using APEs in this way, please do me a favor. Open up your IDE, turn that off, and see if you can take a full CRUD application from start to finish. Hell, try to make a to-do list and don't bother with styling. I'll bet you my shiniest nickel 
you're going to find some extremely unpleasant knowledge gaps about halfway through your config. If you aren't able to do it without APE assistance, you don't actually know how to do it at all. At the end of the day, this is something you must recognize because there will be production bugs APEs can't touch and there will be application features that APEs will code poorly and securely and you will not know that this is the case because ultimately you only know what the APE knows. Worst of all for you, it makes you exactly what they claim you are. Infinitely replaceable with the scaling of APE integration and that, that should scare the hell out of you. Another problem with APEs is that they become less efficient the more you use them, as each piece of new information means more for the model to work through. This is mitigated by advances in the application and in processing power. But as we see the increase in effectiveness with each iteration, we're also going to see an accompanying decrease in efficiency. Not only does this mean it consumes more computational power with each query, it also means the length of time it takes to complete the query increases as well. This means you see a dramatic increase in power requirements over time. And also means that the less training data you have, the slower they advance in their effectiveness. It all comes with several issues. Dramatic power requirements that increase over time and a trade-off between effectiveness or accuracy and efficiency in both power and time. When you run out of training data, you stop being able to advance as well. When you run out of training data, it's a hard ball. Additionally, this point is fast approaching if it's not already here. When this point hits, you really only have two options. Option one, commission massive numbers of people to feed the algorithm, creating content exclusively for this purpose. You can imagine the effect on quality and the requirement of novelty would make this a horrifically demanding, really demoralizing job. Now this isn't even talking about how people feel about directly contributing to their own job going away. Option two is start using APEs to generate training data for APEs. Now this is obviously an issue by nature. The information produced is not novel and would, in a perfect world, still provide much more limited utility. We don't live in a perfect world though, so it contributes to what's called model collapse. It's a phenomenon where APEs consuming themselves rapidly accelerate their faults and errors. You know, what we call hallucinations right now because we're trying to anthropomorphize them. Then it rapidly descends into producing non-language and nonsense. And the approach just doesn't work at all. Now, while we talk about this part, remember that we're basically talking about the fanciest game of Plinko you've ever seen. On December 5th of last year, OpenAI released a new paper on the O1 system card. That paper used the words thought, knowledge, learn, reason, or for reasons we'll discuss in a second, scheme or scheming 124 times a little over two and a half times per page. It speaks to the researchers being absolutely caught up in their own, oh yeah, Kool-Aid whirlpool. And the principal claim that raised eyebrows, it's made on pages 11 through 13 and has examples on pages 43 through 46, if you're following in the paper. And essentially the claim is that because they've expanded their APE's capabilities to computer control access, it exhibits scheming behavior by performing actions like uploading itself to different devices to escape being deprecated. Now that seems convincing, right? We've seen a bunch of stories of nefarious AI gallivanting around the internet or matrix or super tubes or whatever the story's equivalent is after escaping containment and it would look to us like thought, expanding naturally from the reality of associating deprecation of software to a digital death. Now that's a logical leap, right? It demonstrates comprehension, joining together disparate ideas, making pathways that didn't exist, essentially generating novel concepts to respond to stimuli. 
More importantly, it's evidence of a sense of self, right? A metaphysical measure that conceptually separates things from just existing to actually being. Because, you know, I can't think of a better way to say it. Now, this is, of course, the natural next step towards AGI, which is the delineation nearsighted evangelists have now given to the separation between non-intelligent APEs and yes, intelligent AI. Well, no. If you've been paying attention, I've already given the answer away. In it having consumed two disparate types of work, functional manuals for the execution of code and OS-based functionalities and fiction about AI escaping machine death in various ways. The point A of deprecation arrives at the point B relation of machine death, arrives at the point C escape response, arrives at the point D commands for uploading. It's a trivial probabilistic path that's been reinforced over and over in fiction. So not only is it unsurprising to see this behavior and others they claim as evidence, it should occur to anyone thinking about it that in the context of a procedural engine, which is what it is, this should have been able to make the conclusion without any effort or something resembling thought. This sort of behavior more than anything is what provides irrefutable evidence that the people researching APE technology have themselves become unreliable narrators in their own stories, sucking down their own Kool-Aid like it's water. And they're three hours into a highly recreational rave. If you know, Originally, this is gonna be a very long single video, but it's been split into three parts because it was just way too long for my first video. This video was covering the basic mechanics of APEs and why it's not really doing what companies are pretending it's doing. So next, we're going to cover the reasons it doesn't actually have the potential companies are claiming it does. And then the final video is going to cover what I think a lot of other people have been missing, which is why APEs represent a enormous dark pattern and why that's so dangerous so thanks for watching i'll be back soon uh, <laughs> you know how youtube works by now click the buttons if you want to keep seeing my pretty face i'll see you when i see you let's hope it's soon later